so before we get started, I want to get you give you guys an idea of the range of my wireless transmission. Okay? Not even touching the ball. As you can tell, the static doesn't even change. The range is roughly uh, 2 2 inches off the ball. Closer I get, doesn't really make any difference. A little bit brighter, but that's because it's really close to the ball. Um, I do find it really unique how it goes, r either it's going right through the coil, or the coil is just creating its own EMF field and parasitically connecting the energy to the bulb. So <laughs> Last update on this coil design before I mold it into my next coil design. Alright, so let me turn the lights on real quick. Now if you can take a couple minutes to really take a close look at this design, I want to get your comments uh, on how this whole design appears to you, right, and how the plasma reacts to it this design right now, so obviously I got some work to do with the efficiency and and such but what what I found fascinating about this design is how the plasma responded magnetically now I've been doing some uh, some research on magnetics lately and I've been very curious as to how it, the the magnetic current works according to Edward Leeds Gallon and it's called magnetic current um, and how it builds up in all of these these nails uh, so when I when I touch a nail that doesn't have now mind you there's there's 45 turns of wire on all nine of these nails and yes there is a specific uh, geometric setup to it it's a sacred geometry called vortex math and if none of you have um, have looked into it yet then I highly recommend looking up Marco Rodin and checking them out so. This is what I find unique about this design. Okay, so I'm going to turn the lights off. Now I'm going to show you the difference between when I touch a nail without wire and a nail that does have wire. Each nail is wrapped clockwise, counterclockwise with 30, with 15 to 30 turn coil ratios. It's kind of like a bifiler coil setup. So I have this perfect balance. I, I keep it all in resonance with itself. Okay, so let me turn the lights back off. I'll show you real quick. Alright, I'm back. And as you can see, the plasma seems to, I don't know, kind of looks like it moves with the design of the coil, which that's as to be expected. It's all magnetic, right? So I'm going to show you what happens when I touch a nail without wire on it. Alright, now mind you, these are all connected to the same separate nails none of the nails are technically connected to each other all right now i'm going to show you what happens when i can when i touch a nail with wire on it look at that now i'm not exactly sure what's going on here if it's an amplifying force or a repelling force it looks like it's amplifying But is it straining the ball is my next question. I don't think it is. That's what I'm really curious about. Is it straining my ball or not? I'm going to have to hook up the supercapacitors and do some readings on this. As of right now, I'm just looking into the geometry of how magnetism works with my designs and how much power readings I get out of them. Um, I, I know all the, the principles of Ohm's Law and all that stuff, so I, I, I understand where Kirchhoff's law comes in, Faraday's laws, and all those laws on electricity and magnetics and so forth. But none of those scientists have came up with designs like this besides Nikola Tesla and, you know, Marco Rodin and all of them. So you have to do research on their patents to get an idea of how the science works. This is uh, what happens every time when I touch any coil or any uh, nail with wire on it compared to when it doesn't have wire on it doesn't have wire has wire doesn't have wire has wire 
All right, so I just wanted to give you guys that quick update with the new 45-point design. I want to call this the grounding coil. Um, also, the design didn't turn out perfectly. I believe a center point is supposed to form right... If I can get it right there. It's supposed to form right at the dead center point right there. And I didn't get it good enough because I didn't have the right tools and the right <sighs> size screws or anything so I tried using nails and surprisingly it worked out very well and if you guys want to see how the design looks up close I think I can get a nice zoom for you here there that's probably as good as I'm gonna get it for you so I just wanted to give you all a quick update on my project and how it's going so far and if you guys are enjoying the videos and please feel free to subscribe, comment, let me know what you think. Um, I'm still trying to save up money to get more equipment so I can test resonance, uh, inductive reactants, capacitive reactants, whatever you can think of. I want to get all the equipment to test with it. I've pretty much been doing years of reading and now I'm ready to let the information out of the box and really show everyone what I have. So... I hope this video was very uh, influencing for all of you, and just to give you a little idea of how this one this one works, that is what you call a perfectly made coil <laughs> compared to this not perfectly made coil. So, all right, guys, I'm a V King. Out.